I'm going to bring you the press review today. We're going to start with a story that's uh, really taking hold here in France. French schools are going to hold a minute silence today. This is on a, of a Spanish teacher who was stabbed to death by a pupil in southwestern France yesterday, sparking, of course, a lot of reaction in the French media. And Dipti is here to take us through it. Stuart, a teenage teenager was actually arrested uh, in connection with her murder after uh, she was stabbed to death. Agnes Lassalle, that's the name of the a Spanish language teacher who taught at a private school in Saint Jean Luz in France's uh, southwest. Uh, the teenager says he allegedly heard voices. Uh, that's something that's on the front page of Le Parisien, uh, a local paper here, which says killed in her class because indeed she was stabbed uh, in front of pupils by this uh, teenager during class. So it was a very violent. Uh, a very violent, shocking death that uh, that has shocked all of France. In its editorial today, Le Parisien uh, evokes that shock here. You, they've uh, dedicated a two-page spread here, but in, in their editorial here, the editor really evokes that shock and questions also the security of French schools uh, and how this pupil was able to bring a knife in with him to school. You'll see that word sanctuary in Le Parisien's editorial. It's also on the front page of Le Figaro, the right-wing paper, uh, which are uh, here in on its front page, focusing on the grief after uh, that, uh, after the death of that teacher. And in its editorial, it also evokes the word sanctuary, a sanctuary that is school that is grieving today, it says. Um, the paper saying there's been more and more episodes of violence and aggressive behavior in French schools recently, uh, once again, uh, calling for the importance of preserving these sanctuaries uh, of learning for future generations. Let's move a little bit um, further north for this next story to the UK. Supermarkets there have begun rationing fruits and vegetables. Yeah, it feels a little bit like we're in wartime. Uh, some major supermarkets have capped sales of certain fruits and vegetables per person in a bid to curtail a, shortages, a shortage of fruits and vegetables, notably tomatoes, peppers and cucumbers. It's why Metro today is headlining on a personal trainer yesterday who was at one such supermarket who tried to buy 100 cucumbers for her health business and was unable to. She was actually stopped by the manager from buying 100 cucumbers. It's why Metro says, sees her salad a little hyperbolically today on its front page. The Independent, uh, meanwhile, calls Britain the empty basket case of Europe, noting that Britain has become a laughing stock as its shelves go empty. Uh, the paper questioning whether it's uh, really poor weather conditions in Spain and North Africa that have depressed production uh, or is it really uh, or is it also a case of Brexit rules that have badly hurt some supermarkets who import goods from Europe? In any case, retailers say the rationing could last for some weeks to come. It's why uh, the Daily Star, the tabloid today, is offering here on its front page 12 packets of vegetable seeds to its readers. So uh, if you can't find what you're looking for in supermarkets, you might be able to grow it yourself, they say, noting also that the paper marched down to the Houses of Parliament yesterday, demanding that MPs save our salad story. <laughs> Nicely put. At the moment, shelves seem to be full here, at least anyway. We shall see what happens. New study into robots has given a, a glimpse of what our domestic lives could look like within a decade. It's sure to please many people. All I want to know is whether they do the ironing. Uh, they do uh, more than just the ironing. Okay. Uh, if ho household chores are the bane of your existence and the source of all your domestic disputes, well, there is some good news for you. Uh, the Times reports that a new study from the University of Oxford asked experts, AI experts, artificial intelligence experts, to give their predictions on what domestic tasks could be automated in the future. And they uh, call these chore bots, so robots who do your chores. Uh, they, they, these chore bots could cut up to 59% of the time we spend on buying groceries. I'm not quite sure. They don't outline how these bots will buy groceries for you. Uh, but uh, by 2033, nearly half the time we spend washing dishes, cooking, cleaning and doing laundry could be cut. So uh, uh, half the time we do that could be cut thanks to robots who will be doing it in our place. A little shockingly, 21% of physical childcare could also be automated to robots. But thankfully, the, the study also does talk about uh, the ethical and moral uh, consequences or repercussions of delegating childcare to a robot. I don't think we're quite ready for that one. No, I'm not sure about the second bit. First bit, hurrah. Second bit, <laughs> not quite so sure. Um, finally from you, this is a, a new movie. It's called, get this, <laughs> Cocaine Bear. 
It's coming out this weekend. It's garnering a lot of attention based on uh, the true story of a black bear that OD'd on cocaine. That's right. The true story which makes this film all the more remarkable. Uh, it's an extraordinarily extraordinary story, but also very sad because uh, Black Bear back in 1985 did overdose on a large quantity of cocaine that had been dropped by smugglers in the wilderness of Tennessee in the US. The poor bear became known as Cocaine Bear and also Pablo Escobar. Escobar, it was... <laughs> It was eventually, you know, we love puns here, though. I'm, I particularly like that one. It was eventually, it, when it died, it was eventually stuffed and remains on display at a mall in the U.S. today. Uh, the bear is the focus of this uh, this film called Cocaine Bear. It's sort of an R-rated slasher movie that's out this week. But as The Guardian tells us in this article today, it's not the first time that animals have accidentally stumbled across drugs. Back in 2009, uh, wallabies got high on opium in Tasmania, uh, where opium poppies are actually legally grown for medicinal purposes. There was also the story of a raccoon that got high on cannabis in Canada, and a McDonald's-loving skunk, which was found wandering around a parking lot with a McFlurry on its head, Stuart. Oh, that is, I mean, it's kind of it's cute, a bit sad. But sad at the same time, <laughs> exactly. but Pablo Escobar is, that, that's the Brilliant. best one I've ever heard. Well done, Dick. <laughs> that should be the name of the film, I think. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Tika Laurent with the papers on France 24. More from her in a couple of hours' time.